Hello there! Once again, this is Anton from Antonable Bay, and I'm going to continue going through my large box of image comics that I purchased. Um, I purchased a large collection that had a lot of great stuff, and then it had a box of image stuff. I don't really categorize image as really great stuff. I just did the... My last video was all about uh, a very, very big run of Spawn, and a pretty good-sized run of Pit, and this is just what else was in the box. I'm not a huge fan of image, um, but it is what it is. Uh, it was it was fifty bucks for the box. I got it in the scope of a bunch of other videos. Uh, you know, I got the I got the Batman box. I had a a long box full of Spider Man. There's probably a long box full of Uncanny X Men. There's another long box full of Hulk. There's a long box full of a bunch of stuff I haven't gotten through yet. I'm just gonna start going through the image. This is Crimson, a series. Of course, I'm not familiar with. I got two variant covers. I don't know how I feel about that. It's, I'm conflicted. Um, once again, this is Javier's collection. Um, dude passed away, left these comics to his brother, and I've got them now. And I gave him more money than a comic shop would. And this is not one of the boxes I was super excited about. The only aspect I'm excited about Image is that it's really, it's stuff that's really unknown to me. And it looks like I got a pretty good stash of Crimson because I'm on issue three. Issue four, uh, Crimson Five, which I'm going to assume this is uh, vampire stuff. Uh, it looks vampire. I actually I've seen this figure, so maybe I maybe I'm a little familiar with some of the figures from this this comic. There's issue six, issue seven. It's obviously very much in the McFarlane house style. Um, you know, dark, messy, but good. Issue 7, another Issue 7, another Issue 7. Um, I, I said in my last video I feel like this guy was kind of a, uh, a speculator buyer, a speculative buyer. I think a lot of times he thought, the issues he thought were going to be worth more, he, he picked up a couple other copies of. Uh, Crimson number 10, 11, 12... It's an interesting cover. Shoot 13. Like I said, I'm not wild about image by any means. Um, but I, I, I don't know. It's different stuff. I did stuff that I haven't gone through. It's stuff I haven't looked at a thousand times. So I'm kind of excited, of, excited about it in that way. Uh, Crimson 17. I know this is the cliffhanger uh, wing of image, but it's image. Shoot 19. 20, 21. We have to give this cover a bonus simply because it's a chick and a dragon. Anytime you have that combo on your cover, bonus points if the dragon is green. For some reason, it just works better. Um, issue 22, 23. Looks like some sort of one shot. Uh, that's a really heavy foil, strange cover one shot. Um, not sure what that is but anyway this is the kind of stuff that was in the box I understand it's not maybe the most exciting but it is what I got uh, Dark Child issue 1 rendition or rem uh, remastered uh, Vogue number 1 issue of Riptide number 1 Riptide number 2 Savage Dragon two issues of number 1 Number two, Savage Dragon and the Ninja Turtles. That's a cool, cool idea. I got two issues of number three, copy of number eight. Pretty excited about those. Savage Dragons were probably one of the better early on image titles. I will try to stop bumping my camera. Um, let me get into some more basic, I guess. Wetworks. Uh, this is another comic I know nothing about. That's a great cover. Uh, I do have the action figures from this line because I am a massive action figure collector. And so I I know some of the characters from that. I know that's Wildcats on there. <clears throat> but as far as like the books, I've never opened one. I've never read a Wetworks comics. And I don't know anyone who has. So Wetworks number 18. 
number 19, or I mean 15 and 14, sorry, my bad, to 13, Wetworks 12, 11, uh, issue of Backlash and Spider-Man, one of two, issue of Backlash, number 10, Backlash, number 12, and go ahead and pull these down. Nothing exciting, really. Cyber Force, I think that, yeah, Cyber Force, 17, 20. I don't know. These kind of books just never look that interesting to me. Don't get me wrong. The art looks great. I'm, I'm all about the art. It's very dated. It looks very, very 90s Johnny Mnemonic. Okay, I know this character. This is Velocity. That's actually a great character design. I, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, Cyber Force 24, Cyber Force 25, kind of a fancy hollow cover, Cyber Force 16, we get really chromey with a copy of Profit, two copies of Profit, oh let's see, we've got two copies of Profit number one. Another book I have never ever read, but I have, I, I would admit, I have seen Profit Number One and I'll grab it just because, I don't know, something about the color scheme on this just calls out to me. I will snag it. And it's at least Liefeld drawing something that looks exactly like it should look. Like this character is exactly how it should look. It's been, it looks, now that I look at it, I'm thinking, gosh, this really looks like a Shatterstar from uh, X Force, another. Live old character. Uh, Profit four. I'm assuming different series because they are different prices. Got two issues of that. Profit number five. Two copies of that. For some reason, we went whole hog and we got three copies of issue number seven. I don't know why. Um, a different copy of issue seven. I don't know if it's a different book or a different line. Or a variating cover. There's Profit 8. Profit 9, which is actually a pretty darn good cover. Because <clears throat> he looks freaking ginormous there. Uh, Profit 6. A copy of Profit 10. Three copies of Profit number 5. I don't know why he, he needed three copies. He's got another 6. Another eight, and a different three from what looks like a different line. Like I said, I'm not an image guy. I don't know. Um, the Kindred, issue four. He's got two copies of that. Team seven, number two. He's got a couple copies of that. He's got a copy of Team seven, number one. A different copy of Team seven, number one. Another one of those copies of number one. Holy cow. He's got three copies of that Team 7 number one. I guess now I've got three copies of that Team 7 number one. Uh, Team 7 3. Uh, F5 1. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the Darkness issue 20. Another Team 7. Holy cow. This guy. Rip cloth. Three, with class six. I only know this guy by his action figure. He looks like a Wolverine guy, basically. Or you could just say he's a perfect ripoff of the Wildcats Warblade because he looks just like a red version of him. Kindred number one. Um, I at least know Grifter on the cover. Um, F5 number one and number two. Number two has a cooler cover. Uh, the Kindred number two, two of those. Kindred number three. Gotta pull these down. Yeah, man, it just gets me about Image Comics is so many of this first couple years all looked the same. It was so similar. Death Blow Zero, Death Blow 13, Death Blow 14. Uh, Deathblow 28, 
29, 21, looks like we got the Gen 13 crew on there. Uh, 20, we've got uh, Gen 13 again. Death Blow 19, 16, a different Team 7, Objective Hell number one, Darkness Pit number three, Backlash seven, Kindred number three, that's a pretty cool cover. You got it in a heck of a bag. I wonder if that's, I don't know. He's got two of them. It was apparently worth something at some point because he treated it as such. I doubt it's probably worth anything at this point, which if I remember right, was pretty much the way Wizard, Wizard was hawking these things because they were, oh, they were so great. They were, they were gonna be worth a fortune. They were so in demand and now nobody gives a damn. Uh, Black Flag number two. I like that cover. <clears throat> F5, number three. Twice. F5, number four. Death Blow, a total black cover issue. I don't really know what that is. Death Blow, number eight. Black Flag, zero. Death Blow, number five. Looks like Maul in the background. Backlash one, two copies. See, I think this, I think the guy thought these were probably gonna be worth money and he was trying to invest. And if that's not a reminder that you should only buy the comics you like, only buy the comics you like. Don't, don't buy something because you think it's gonna be worth a fortune. I bought these because, well, they came in a box and they were one of the boxes of the other collection. Not that I particularly wanted these images at all, um, but I do love comics and I do love stuff that I'm not familiar with. And these are definitely fit that bill, but they don't, they don't really excite me that much. And it will probably be a labor to even read several of these because I don't know, they just don't have the, don't have the draw for me. Yeah. I'm not, not I, I, even when I see a comic that I think it's gonna be worth money, I, I don't know, I'm not the guy who buys a ton of them. Uh, Deathblow 9, 10, 13. I'm also against it if your name is Death in your title. For some reason that's just, I don't know. It's, that's lame. Uh, Deathblow 15, Deathblow 17, 18, a black, black, Cover. Adjust my camera. I'm having a problem. Yep, sorry about that. Death Blow 2, 3. These covers look so similar. More Cyber Force. It's a good art. It's a good cover. It would be great if it was on a sci fi novel or something. You'd, you'd be interested, but. I don't know, something about it just does not intrigue me because I know what's inside. I know it's it's image house stuff. Two issues of eight because it's gonna be worth so much money. Cyber Force number nine. Cyber Force 13, 14, 12. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to him. Some of these covers are pretty sweet. Issue 10, Cyber Force number one. Better pull these down. And I'm not trying to like totally rip on image stuff. I know there was a lot of image fans out there, but it was never really my cup of tea. Got Cyber Force number two, Cyber Force number three. I also think it doesn't help that the way, the way the comic industry promoted these, like Wizard was telling us these were gonna be these, these were the hottest books on the market. I think that soured a lot of people because they weren't that great. If you'd have just put these out, you know, quietly, and you hadn't had all the hype around them, I think people would have been a lot less disappointed in them because we were expecting like, oh, this is gonna be like change the face of the comic industry. And it really, it didn't. It wasn't, wasn't as good a stuff as we'd hoped it was. Uh, Cyber Force number four. Two copies, three copies, 
because you got to have three. One to read, one to store forever, and one to sell when the prices are high. Uh, another issue of number six. Another issue of number one. He's got this thing like in a freaking vault of a plastic bag. That's nuts. Stormwatch number one. Stormwatch zero. Cyber Force zero zero. Where? A Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider number 40. That's awesome. Tomb Raider Witchblade. Tomb Raider Witchblade number one. Tomb Raider Witchblade Revisited. Tomb Raider 34. You can never go wrong with Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider 35. 36. Uh, Tomb Raider 32. Video game goodness. Tomb Raider 29. Issue 43. We jump to Divine Right, which I know nothing about. But I would say that that cover is better than a lot of these. Divine Right 4. I guess it's Divine Right, The Adventures of Max Faraday. Um, Divine Right Issue 6. Issue 7, Issue 8, Divine Right 9, 9 twice, Issue 10, Divine Right 11, Divine Right 12, and some, it's a cool cover, it's kind of chromey, I don't see a number on it, Divine Right, Divine Right, I don't know, I don't see a number on it. Anyway, that's pretty much it uh, for the second half of the box of, of Image Comics. Like I said, nothing in there that's going to be like landmark. Oh my god, that's so good. It's just kind of meh. Um, this was like, you know, 90s, 90s image, early 90s image. It is what it is. It's a time and a place. And you know what? At least I got some issues of Tomb Raider out of the box. So... We'll go with that. Anyway, that's my story. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you later. Bye.